What is up, guys? We are back with another couple episodes of Going For It. Uh, you will see your first appearance of Mike Spillane in uh, this round of uh, some Going For It podcast. Uh, you'll also see a couple new segments I did with Craig. Uh, we called it Carry On Craig, where Craig kind of just gets on a soapbox and talks about whatever he wants, which is basically just the podcast, but uh, a little more a little more focused from Craig for a couple minutes. And In the Pocket, which is a breakdown of the QBs in that division that we talk about in the offseason, just kind of how we feel about them, rank them, a lot of top fives, all that good stuff. So we have even a little bit of draft talk. So that is what we got going on in going for it. At this time, uh, you guys can hope to see some more content more regularly from us. As you can see, I got my setup finally ready to go. I'm repping my New York Giants. All of this stuff was recorded pre-free agency and pr like right after the J.J. Watt signing. So we don't have anything super duper up to date, but I wanted to release it anyway so you guys could get our takes and see how we're feeling. Uh, that will be coming to a screen near you right now. Uh, oh. Speaking with Deshaun Watson, uh, Jeff Darlington of ESPN when this was written on Friday, when our outline was written, yeah, um, had said that the Bears had the biggest offer out for Deshaun Watson. Okay. I read today that a Chicago reporter has said that the Bears' number one priority this offseason is Russell Wilson. Yeah, see, I, I also thought they were higher on Russ, and I, I bought in. I, I started drinking the Kool-Aid on the Sierra wants to be in Chicago. Even though that hurt me because I, I felt like musically Miami would make more sense, but apparently she's got connections in Chicago and music is big there also. It would be so much better in Miami, though, for her. I agree, but the the people that were saying what they were saying seemed like Sierra had something in it. I mean, you met her. Can you give us any, can you give us what you know? Did you say anything about wind? Maybe maybe she talked about the weather and you could say windy and you're like, oh, that's Chicago. Maybe it was real like sunny. So as of two years ago, when I met Sierra and Russell Wilson, um, <laughs> they had More updated data. No, you don't. <laughs> Come on over. Going for it. We'll give Going you for it. old data. Two years old information. Um, they were very big fans of Andretti and wanted franchising information. So maybe that's a. Oh, interesting, because I don't know if there are any in the north yet. I'm going to put some credence in that. It's two years old. I mean, I can tell you for a fact that they asked for franchising information because I was standing there. Yeah. That is a real thing they asked Well, you could for. also know for a fact that they have the money. Yes. Yeah. Although in, those in, buildings are not cheap. That's a that's no. a, an eight-figure building. He's on a nine-figure contract. Yeah. So he's And that's like, part yeah, of the whatever. reason guys like him are tough to move. But I, I think we're going to be – in a very interesting space. So we have what, six, seven weeks until the draft, I think, or maybe it's seven and a half. Um, and boy, is it going to be every city is going to get talked about this until we know for sure, which we might not even draft day. Although I think if there's moves to be made, they need to be made no later than that. Right. Because you, the, the teams lose all their credibility and might actually have holdouts to deal with. So let me ask this. Deshaun or Russ go to Chicago. Doesn't that feel like a downgrade as to where they are? Well, at least Russ for sure is a downgrade. Deshaun yeah. feels almost like a lateral move. Maybe not in the win-loss column, but in the tools I have around me. This is what surprises me about the, the Bears being talked about big with both of them. Not, not a super great run franchise either. No, and it, it hurts me because I feel like Miami has better assets right now. My, I, that's my belief, but I could be homerism on it for sure. I agree that for Russ, almost anything's a downgrade just because he has some young pieces. He's got some interesting things, although we'll get to some of that uh, that I think could be hitting a little downswing. But that O-line is so bad for Russ that I think he benefits from going almost anywhere and, and getting a few new guys excited. Maybe he gets a few watches out and like guys actually don't let him get hit because he's getting hit so much. A lot. For no, Most for of no any reason. quarterback in the last five years. For no reason. That, yeah. That's and th that's got to be a part of where his frustration is. It's like you've done nothing to get me 
anything to cover my ass. I'll win you another Super Bowl if you just keep me on my feet. And that he's got the the stats the and the the credentials to prove that they're not doing it. So I'd like to see both of these guys move from their situation. But the Bears is, I don't know, shocking. But the one thing we, well, I'll, I won't say we because I'll say me, but I know you for a long time. One thing I always discount is like legacy teams and credibility of a franchise. I always discount it. I always do. But I think occasionally players don't. I think there's occasionally players that are like, no, I want to play there. I want my name next to X, Y, Z. I want to move the needle for, I think as a fan, we almost never consider that. And I wonder if players ever think of like that moment of like, I, I'm going to live in Chicago for, for an amount of years in my life. And I want my name on things. Well, I, don't I guess the, the benefit for Russ there would be, I'm going to bring Chicago back to relevancy. Mm-hmm. And then he's also head to head with Aaron Rodgers every every twice a year every year oh, yeah. for the next however long, and Hopefully that's Sunday night football, that's Monday night football, that's constant, you know, yes, just eyes on you at all times. So you, that's a very I, strong point. That's a very strong point because, boy, if what you're thinking, if and we we kind of know about Russ that he's a bit smart. And I don't mean it just as a quarterback. He does marketing deals. He does things. He, uh, oh, what yeah. is it? The, the the charity he does, they gave away so many meals last year, like millions and millions of meals. I think it was Feeding Harvest that, that you'd have to, I'm, I'm not sure the name of it, but awesome stuff. And he shows up in places, right? And that's interesting that you said it that way because what we're not really thinking about is what these guys are thinking for their next step. And it isn't always about playing in that moment. Of course it is in the, 16 games and then possibly you want to play 19 games or whatever right. but for some of them it may be that it's like where i go next is where i'm going to put my production company where i go next is where i'm going to start my uh pizza franchise or or, or or whatever you know kevin durant really shook me my mind up on that i always go to basketball i know that but when he went um over to i guess what the nets He's got business dealings that all of a sudden, like like weeds, started shooting up. It makes sense. When LeBron went to L.A., the timing was right. He's got Space Jam coming out. His production company is doing things. Is What we're seeing in football, and I know we'll get to this too, is that same kind of trajectory of players understanding who they are and their value. I, I think I've been for years discounting that. I think it might matter. Yeah, I think that would be the the thing like Russ has even said in past interviews, he wants to be he wants to go down as a goat. He wants to go down as someone who changed the game. He wants to go down as one of the best players of this decade, bar none, hands down, 100 percent. And if you can bring the Chicago Bears back into a relevant place, then I would say if you can t- take a division title away from Aaron Rodgers, you, you definitely off to a good start, off to a That's good right. start. But I just don't know if Chicago has the pieces around him to be able to help him do that. But w- to that point, we what we saw last year, when Brady came, others showed up at a lower dollar amount. You put a guy like Russ or Deshaun on a new team, there are a few free agents, there are a few dudes that are like, I'm going to follow the leader a little bit here, and there might be an opportunity to make some noise. So I think that... I'm I'm, I'm going to be excited for all these moves and I'm ready for them. Meaning like I would prefer moves for both because player happiness for me makes them better. Aaron Rodgers showed us that when his happiness and his personal happiness went up, he's out there slinging, baby. He's out there just making it happen. MVP season. If they're both upset, Deshaun and Russ, we're not going to get as football fans the best of it. And I'd love to see the best of what they're capable of because they're two of the top five. So I want to throw this in there, too. I know it's it's a little further down in our outline. But with that, with all of the talk around Russ, especially Deshaun, I think we're both in the same we're, we're both in agreement that 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 is done. Whether or not they trade him, he's never wearing a Houston Texans jersey ever I, again. I can't see it. I can't see it happening. Is the Russell Wilson relationship in Seattle fractured beyond repair? Will we ever see him as a Seattle Seahawk ever again? I don't think it's as bad as the uh, Deshaun situation because there wasn't the public 
kind of we're going to get you involved and then they didn't. Uh, right. It seems to be a bit more on the private side. He wanted some say. Did what was it ever articulated properly? I mean, from the perspective of the things we're seeing, it sounds like he would have he might have said that. I don't know if he said it to a Carol. He said it to ownership. I have no idea. Deshaun, it was very clear that the owner said something to him, said, "I'll yes, I'll bring you in on this and then just chose not to in either a power move or like the most costly, forgetful moment of that man's life. I think it was a power move in the wrong one, but that's just me. I don't think he just forgot. I think he said a thing and then didn't do it thinking I don't need to do it. I don't know enough about like the Carol Russ relationship to, to know whether there was something there. But I do know that if Russ said it, even in like passing, it would matter to him. And that's what we're seeing in the NFL. These guys, they're, they, they've realized they're not just pawns on a chessboard. They're right. not. And and maybe they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, certainly before that. They just were that. That's not the case anymore. So you can't tell a, a grown ass man to his face that, hey, I'm going to I'm going to at least hear you out on this and then not that that is a slap in all up the face, neck, nose, all of it and really moves that person's feelings about the franchise. And we know this about football players, about every sport you you move their heart on where they're playing and they'll find new fans at the next stop. They'll find new love. You'll be the one hurting. And we're going to see that in Houston. And gosh, I'm excited if it, if it happens for Seattle, because I have necessarily no love for Seattle. I'm a Dolphin fan, right? Just get, yeah. Bring him even closer to us. Even if it's not that he gets all the way here, he's at the furthest place on earth from us. Now bring That's him true. a little closer. So give me percentages. What, what, What's the percentage from zero to 100? 100% being they're there for the rest of their career. Happy, great, cashing those checks. Oh. Deshaun Watson is a Houston Texan. Zero percent chance he's 0%. at Houston for his whole career. Zero. What about next year? I, I, next year, I would say zero. I'm a double zero. Here's why. I don't think he's showing up, even if it costs him the 20 mil. And then if they figured something out in reconciliation – He's gone after that contract, gone. And with Russ, I would say we're at a coin flip, probably 50, 60% he's there next year. I would say very low, probably in the 10% he's there for his whole career. Well, and and so to close this out, I really think what, what happened with this last Brady move was the thing that Peyton did first, and I would like that to be known, Mm. that that mm. switching yes. of teams getting a super bowl with another team and adding to the legacy that way yes. not being a like what Eli did and I I will always have I love in my heart for Eli that. he was a career giant he didn't want to go play anywhere else he had offers to go somewhere Respect. else and he was like nah if I'm not a giant I don't want to be anywhere and that's great but I think Brady has shifted the narrative a little bit because he went and saw what Peyton did and said I'm going to do that too and maybe he a little bit. He might one up him. Fast, yeah. Faster he, he and might, better. He might one up him by doing it twice, but I think that changes the narrative for, for players like Russ, who I got one in Seattle. Can I move somewhere? And not only did he get one, they've done nothing for him on the protection side for years, multiple years. You said it yourself, most sacks in five years. That means multiple years. Yes, they added some flashy receivers, they added some things for him. Not enough. Chris Carson's great. Like I'm, I'm with that. Although he could, he's on the the move. Uh, yeah, and, to move and as well. also very injury prone. Also very yes, injury. Yes. 